Hi everyone, welcome back to Exploring AWS. Now in this video, we're gonna look at some of the different cloud services that you're gonna to wanna to be aware of and, and, and the cloud services that AWS is gonna provide. So there are three core cloud services that are supported by AWS and that are also supported by most cloud providers uh, most, I would say, most primary cloud providers today. So the first one is going to be SaaS, software as a service. And this is going to remove your necessity to constantly have to maintain the software itself. So you think about some of the things you have to worry about when you, uh, when you own the software, right? You have to worry about bugs. Uh, you have to worry about patches, right? And, and that may be directly related to the bugs. Uh, you have to worry about configuration, right? You have to worry about, okay, how are we going to configure that application, that web server, that database server? Um, when we deal with SaaS, the software itself is going to be owned by the provider. So it's going to be owned by AWS, Okay, this is not something where we're going to have to maintain those licenses, we're going to have to maintain the configuration, we're going to have to do all that stuff. No, it's going to be maintained and owned by AWS. Your users or even you are just going to simply access the interface to that software over the internet, but you don't control how it's configured, you don't control when it's patched, you don't control when the outage windows are, you don't have to maintain anything. It's really a great service, and I would think probably the best, most well-known SaaS um, service today is Office 365 by Microsoft. I realize this is an AWS course, but at the same time, you know, we, we need to understand the different cloud services that AWS is going to give us. And, and again, I think Office 365 is probably the best and most well-known SaaS service where you're not really configuring your Exchange server. You know, you're, you, Microsoft doesn't give you access to that, right? You, you're not configuring, um, you know, all the different applications that the users use. I mean, the whole idea with Office 365 is that, you know, you subscribe to Microsoft, they give you access and you move on. That's, that's all you need, right? So this is, this is SaaS and it's really an awesome, um, it's really an awesome platform for, for any customer that's looking to kind of alleviate the burden of constantly having to maintain uh, software. However, there are times in the world where you are going to need to customize that software. You are going to need to customize that infrastructure. You are going to need to do a little bit extra tweaking. And this is where PaaS comes in or platform as a service. Um, you, you don't, you're not worried about the infrastructure underlay. So I don't necessarily care maybe what operating system it runs on, right? I, I don't want to have to worry about patching that operating system, but I do need to configure that software, right? So what do I do now? Right? Well, the, again, this is where pass comes in. So let's say that you have a database server and again, you, you don't care, uh, you know, maybe you have a preference, whether it's Microsoft SQL or, you know, uh, MySQL, but you don't want to configure MySQL. You don't want to have to worry about configuring Microsoft SQL. You just need access to the actual database so that you can make some customized configurations, uh, you know, within the database. You can have some customized table architecture, et cetera. This is where platform as a service comes in. Um, you know, your, your, uh, your different database services within AWS are going to be categorized as, at least currently categorized as platform as a service where, you know, you don't care about the infrastructure underlay. You don't care about how the server is actually configured. You don't care how they've configured Microsoft SQL as a, as an overall software, but you do have access to get in there and create different table views and create different architectures within the database so that it can, can be customized to your software. Now, the third one is where you're going to have the most control. Okay, and this is really important for you to understand. Uh, this is going to be called infrastructure as a service, and I think within uh, within uh, AWS, your EC2 instances are going to be the, the best example of this within AWS because your EC2 instances are going to be an actual server deployment that you deploy. So even though we haven't gotten into how to do that yet, when you go into AWS and you actually deploy an EC2 instance, you own that server, right? You're going to, I mean, you could deploy a free tier, right? So let's say, let's just, let's just go with CentOS, right? So let's say we don't pay for that CentOS uh, deployment. We don't pay for the license, um, but we own that server. We can go in, we can change the root password. We can dictate, you know, when and where that server gets patched. If we deploy a Windows server, it's the same thing. We can, we can add as many users as we want. We can install whatever application we want. We can crash the server and destroy it if we really want. So that server is under our complete control. We control everything about that infrastructure you know, within reason, right? We don't control how the network cable is plugged in. We don't control, um, 
you know, necessarily how everything is configured on that server because it, it's talking back to AWS's infrastructure. But we do control, you know, even the IP addresses, right? We, we can we can dictate what subnet that goes on. We can dictate, uh, you know, maybe what IP address that, that machine gets. We can dictate um, all of those things within that server, within that server, is under our control. If we want to deploy MySQL and configure it with, you know, the, the worst, most unsecure password in the world, we can do that. That's on us. Whereas platform as a service, again, you know, we may not care exactly how that's all configured, even though there are some base screens that you'll go through for configuration and password will be one of them. I don't want you to get hung up on the password. The idea is that, you know, it's not something that that AWS is in charge of. It's, hey, this is this is all you. It's your complete control. So these are the three core services that AWS is going to provide for us. And, and again, any cloud provider is going to provide for us. And regardless um, regardless what we deploy within AWS, it's always going to fall within one of these three categories. So every single thing that we click on in AWS, every single uh, option that we deploy, every service we deploy is going to fall within one of these three categories. All right. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.